so today my topic is about mrams uh these are my references uh, microchip technology in the youtube channel and we corp in another youtube channel wikipedia and uh, my smartphone for the uh, sources so uh, when we actually select for any type of ram we have uh, srams drams flash and etc so uh, when we select uh, it's just that we compromise on something it's uh, like uh if if we go for if we want faster RAM, faster memory then we we go for s rams if uh, we want lower density we go for d rams and uh, if we want non volatility then we go for flash but is there a way where uh, we could get all of these three things in just one uh memory so this can be achieved using something called as m rams Uh, MRAMs typically stand for uh, magneto resistive random access memory where uh, it's a random access memory which is based on magnets so uh, normal semiconductor based memories uses electron charge to store data whereas MRAMs uses electron spin to actually store data so why is it better why 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 do we use this uh, what if i say that we can achieve the speeds of sram density of dram and non volatility of flash in just one uh, memory the mram so that's an that's an ideal case of memory right so why use mram again the question remains the same like it's symmetrical in the sense uh, we can read write jump around address location symmetrically Put it in simple words: We can read a byte just as fast as we write a byte, and the interfacing timing and speeds are typically uh, same as that of SRAMs. It's non-volatile, uh, non-volatile in the sense the memory content is not lost when the power is off, and writes to the memory are non-destructive. So before we actually uh, into mrams we we need to clarify on certain topics which is trivial for this so let's understand how it works so we have all played with magnets so let's start with that experience we have north south so what what gives the magnetic uh, property to a certain substance it's the electron spin it's the electron spin if uh, if it is north and south uh, if i watch from the north side the top view the electrons are spinning in uh, a clockwise direction if it is oriented south north like south uh, top and north bottom then it's rotating in an anti clockwise direction so what causes magnetic attraction and repulsion so we we have played with magnets we know that uh, south attracts north and uh, north uh, is repulsive towards north uh, same way for the south so if we place north south north south configuration so the spins are aligned the spins are same both are uh, clockwise direction spins but if we go for south north uh, north south configuration then the spins are opposite so here the repulsivity or uh, resistance to that motion is high in case of south north north south with the resistance to and it's actually attraction in north south north south configuration so what happens if we put the same configuration in an electric circuit it behaves the same way uh, north south north south configuration will have less resistance and uh, south north north south configuration will have an higher resistance so this is the uh, basic working principle of an mram which we'll see later okay mram actually uses two types of magnets one being the fixed state magnet and another being the free state magnet uh, what does fixed state magnet means 
So fixed state magnet implies that the orientation or the spin of the electron is fixed, like you can't change that. So a free state magnet, it can be changed uh, from clockwise to anticlockwise or anticlockwise to clockwise using currents. So how does the free state magnet work? So we have a free state magnet here at the top, uh, this one. So if we direct a current in this direction from left to right and uh, a perpendicular current which is coming out of the board. So what happens is this from left to right the direction the spin spin of the mag uh, electron would also uh, try to follow the same path as that of a current. So it's like clockwise direction. So suddenly what if we change the current flow direction this like opposite to that of this from right to left and here in inwards the frame so this thing will try to change the direction i mean the spin uh, with accordance with the current flow direction so this thing which is clockwise initially will become anti-clockwise like this this is how phase state magnet work so this is a structure of mram cells in an MRAM cells, we have a bit line, this thing, and we have two uh, magnetic materials, this being the fixed magnetic material and this being a free state magnetic material. Between those two, to isolate that, we have something called a tunnel barrier and an anti magnetic material to uh, isolate this from the transistor part, which being NPN. We have something called a read word line, which is nothing but a gate and VDD being our voltage and the right word line this is the perpendicular current line which uh, initial I mean which we saw in the previous slide so, yeah so data in MRAM is stored by magnetic storage elements this thing right so this is two uh, ferromagnetic materials which is separated by an insulating layer this entire junction is known as magnetic null junction this is the simplest structure for an MRAM. Like, uh, before we go and discuss about how to write in an MRAM, we sh will we shall see how to read. So, in this configuration, just consider this that this is the fixed state and this is the free state. Both are aligned. So what will happen is if I uh, enable the read word line, then the current flows from this and this ha as these both are aligned in the same uh, rotation like in the rotation of the electrons are aligned so this has low resistance so the current easily pass, passes through uh, this configuration and it's it's seen at the bit line which is read as logic 1 uh, for other state other condition uh, the two magnetic states are opposite in the sense opposite in the spin one is uh, uh, one is clockwise and another one is anti-clockwise so here the same the current due to the read word line and it's enabled the current flows and what happens is due to the high resistance a low current is passed so it, it is considered as zero in case of our digital like in digital we have just logic zero or logic one we don't have 1.1 or 1.2 something like that or 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 so this is how uh, read works so we need to remember that Lower resistance, uh, logic 1 is red. Higher resistance, logic 0 is red. So let's get back to the right part. Okay. So in the in the right part, what happens is we we know from the read part that this will read 0 only when this is of low resistance. For this to be lower resistance, this pin should be aligned with this pin. So the current should be from this uh, left to right so that uh, the clockwise direction like the spin of the electron is along the line of the current when the current is from left to right here it will be perpendicularly outward same the same happens for this but the direction changes uh, the since we know that this should be of high resistance what we do is the current should flow from right left so that the spin uh, lines with that direction anti-clockwise so that's how uh, we write I mean the write is done in an MRAM
so let's go so the major disadvantage of this type of memory devices is it's extremely dependent on magnetic uh, uh, field so if there is an uh, inductive motor or an external magnetic field then the data which is stored has a potential to change right so the data is lost in that situation so the mram should be isolated from the external magnetic fields like if i have an induction motor then the entire data is destroyed so we should have i mean that's one major disadvantage and another disadvantage of this method which can be actually solved is usage of high current so how can we solve that so we use something called as sdt spin transfer clock and another one is tas tas is not a widely used method we generally go for sdt tas still r and d to be done so how does this work so when i consider fixed state material fixed state uh, magnetic material i assume the spin of the electron to be clockwise how is it so for a normal metal this, there are two spins right in electron anti clockwise and clockwise direction that is known as up spin and down spin in this case so for a normal metal that would be equal if i go for a ferromagnetic material what will happen is the up spin or uh, the clockwise spin of an uh, like electrons with clockwise spin is more than that of electrons with anti clockwise spin so this thing uh since the majority of them are clockwise we assume the free state ferromagnetic material to be clockwise direction so how does this help so when i pass a current to this ferromagnetic material the current is actually neutral in the sense the anti clockwise spinning electrons is equal to the clockwise spinning electrons but when i pass it through a ferromagnetic material then it polarizes it polarizes towards clockwise uh, i mean yeah the clockwise spinning electrons will be more so when that happens in a current i just need certain current to just trigger that uh, free state material to go into a clockwise spin so that's the entire stt and again in an ionized current or a polarized current be specific induces a torque which in turn changes the free state materials spin or it aligns the free state materials spin this is how stt works so uh, about the generations of mrams there are basically four uh, generations first being the mrams itself and the second became a troubleshooting of mram which is stt mram the third one being as mram and the fourth being v mram okay the timeline mram is not actually a new technology but may uh, so much r and d is done right from the beginning of early uh, early 80s to late 70s or late 70s to early 80s so the first major breakthrough was honeywell developing its first magneto resistive uh, memory device and after that motorola started to uh, invest in this technology motorola actually successfully developed it 256 kb mram chip and again there an again the first stt mram was actually manufactured or patented by spintech laboratories and recently in 2019 everspin uh, technologies actually started shipping off 38 nanometer 1 gb stt mram chips that was considered a major uh, breakthrough in this uh, entire thing so that's it Thank you.